Hello everyone, it's me, Jamarica5288. So, I'm gonna plant Swiss chard three way. I'm gonna plant some beef steak tomatoes and I'm gonna plant the Casper eggplant. And maybe, maybe I will plant some blue curly kale. We'll see. So, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the bright light Swiss chard. I got these seeds from Homestead Heart last summer and they came up. So we're gonna put some more um, bright lights, Swiss chard in this, in this seedling tray. I'm just making a small dent in this soil for all of the Swiss chard because we're doing Swiss chard three-way in this line right here. So we'll see who's who and I know that this this will come up because I've done this one before, and it shouldn't be it should be fine. Look at this big old stick. Should be fine. Chico, get out of my pepper plant, boy. Oh man, that is a problem. The dogs. He goes and digs up the dirt. Anyway, I got my little dent here for my seeds because these are big seeds. I'll show you them in my hand in a minute. This chart is, is a decent sized seed. You don't have to dust it like some of the other things. Now, I dusted those, like put just dusting means I just sprinkled the seeds on the top. However, some of them, they didn't root well. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put these in the um, in the soil. These are bigger, so I'm, I have to put these in the soil. So I'm gonna put one here. That's two, that's three, that's four, that's five, that's six. If you hear something crunching, that's my dog. Every time I get on camera, this dog wants to eat. It's like he times it. And I don't want to stop him from eating, but it's kind of annoying. He's a little kibble. All right, so I planted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. Now, I ain't saying eight of them gonna come up, but that's what I planted. I'm gonna put the rest of them back in here for safekeeping. And I'm not growing eight of them in the house. So maybe I should only plant four. I've already gotten the seeds wet. Let me just let it go. Let it go, girl. Okay, so that's back in here. Okay, orange Swiss chard. All right, orange Swiss chard, what's up with you? Why are you giving me a hard time? Shoot. <laughs> That's from MI Garden, and I just started buying seeds from them. So this is my first experience with them. I know that um, Homestead Heart seeds work for sure. I've already planted hers a couple of times. I went back to her seed store. They're not out yet, but I'm waiting. I am waiting anxiously to buy seeds from her or from her and her husband. I shouldn't say her, it's a family. The hearts. That's three. That's four. Five. I'm just gonna do a five with them. Well, this is the one that didn't germinate, so. Six. Uh-oh. Seven. All right, I'll do seven seeds with that one. Now, another seed that I know will work, even though it's old and dusty, is this. Ford Hook Giant. That's what I have out there on the side. The one that went through the winter, that's this seed. And I got this from the survival pack of uh, seeds that I got on Amazon. I was like, survival? I'll, I'll take that. You know, that that um, group of seeds, the survival package of seeds, if you do it, if you price it pack by pack, you're actually paying a little bit less than a dollar for the seeds. I just bought it again because I use these. Oh, this is not, is this, what's this, survival? 
and they're heirloom. I think this was survival or, or oh, I can't remember. It may have, may not have been survival. It might, might have been the grocery store because this looked like one of them grocery store packets of seeds that um, got wet and I got for like 10 cents a pack. I have so many seeds, I forget. Y'all stop. Get, get. Bedtime. That's the only way I can bring the peace to send them away. You're looking at me like, I'm, but I'm hungry. I hate to send you to bed without supper, but every time he eats, I got these animal problems. Every time he eats, the German Shepherd, that little Chihuahua comes and starts putting his little nose in the bowl too. And then this German Shepherd gets mad because the darn Chihuahua doesn't want to eat unless he, somebody else is already eating. He always, you ever had somebody always want to pick off your plate? That is the most annoying thing ever. Eat your food and leave me my plate alone. That's what the dog is saying. I know exactly how you feel, Cyrus. <laughs> Not nobody picking off my plate. All right, so all of those are in. And all I'm gonna do is cover them up. Cover them up with soil. Even if I have to take some from the other pot and cover them. And this soil is already wet, so I don't have to wet it. I don't know if maybe I wet the other soil too much because I had my um, sprouts in there my bean sprouts or my my microgreens in there and I have to keep those roots wet and those roots don't need as much water as the microgreens does so that may have been where I made my mistake I don't know maybe they'll still germinate but I'm just doing this as insurance so I have Swiss char three ways the Ford hook the Ford hook giant the Shoot. <laughs> Put the stuff back where it belong, girl. Because <laughs> I won't know what this is. The orange Swiss chard, that's what did not germinate. And then I have the bright lights Swiss chard. I think I, I think the last time I planted Swiss chard, I was surprised when it came because it took forever. So that might be what's going on over there. We'll see. So I don't need that much beef steak tomatoes. I just need a couple. Was it dampened? No, it dampened off. So I know two of them came up. I planted four seeds, but this is an old pack of seeds. This thing is expired. Mm -hmm. It's expired. So I planted four, two came up, and one dampened off. So I have one in there. Struggling, fighting for its life. I might have a gnat problem now. I've seen a couple of things fungus gnats running and they eat the roots of the plants so i'm gonna go and put some diatonaceous sun to earth on that after i leave this 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 uh this little this very uh planting session i'm gonna fix them little jokers because they that is a pro well i'm gonna fumigate this house anyway i fumigate this house every couple of months just a thing i do i don't i don't even see anything around here but it's getting cold out there and I'll start seeing like roly polies and stuff around the door. And I'm like, how did you get in? They get trying to get away from the cold. And I do not like bugs. Do not. So I bomb this house every every couple of months. And I tell my friend, I tell him, um, don't leave until I, I open all the windows because uh, I have breathing issues. I ain't supposed to be around that smoke. We usually gone for a while. I tell him, don't leave. Wait till I come back out the house. <laughs> He's like, what is wrong with her? But that's why. In case I fall out in here. By the time we get back, though, it's all clear. But I still have to open the windows. That stuff doesn't kill the plants. But if there is any insect around, they're gone. And I do it every time I leave, so. It happens quite a bit. 
poor plant's like, she's fumigating again. Oh God, help. Help me, I can't breathe. Just doing it for them. Fungus gnats that I had. Man, that was interesting. I had that a couple of years ago. That is a terrible thing. And that came from some dirt that I, or soil that I purchased from the, from the store. Some soil that they shouldn't have been selling. Oh God, I don't have that many seeds. This eggplant. I put three in there. That's two. I don't have a lot of seeds. That makes you value the seeds more when you don't have a lot of them. Okay, I put three eggplant in here. And make sure I cover those up there. I can see them, so they can be dusted too. So I have my tomato plants and my eggplant in here. Just have to hope, hope that um my eggplant comes up because I want that. I never had. I've never had Casper eggplant. So this is another thing with this soil. This soil is good. Everything germinates in this soil. The thing is, it's that city of Austin soil. The thing is, it's got sticks in it. They don't they don't sift it. Not well anyway. You were like, good enough for government work. Ship it out. Ship it. <laughs> what they gonna say? <laughs> All right. So I got up to here done. Man, now I got all this space. There's a rock in here. Got all this space and I'm done. I don't have anything else to plant. Except for this kale. Blue curled kale. And that's what I guess I'll put in there. Yeah. That's what I put in there, some kale. Spread it out. I do mean spread it out. These seeds are small. So I'm not, I don't need a million plants. And I can put these outside, which I, some of them are. Look at my dirty fingers. Some of them are going outside. So. I we'll have a house full of plants. Although, it is good for you to have a lot of plants in your house. And they don't say what type. It could be vegetables, any type of plants. It cleans the air. That's why houses that are out in the woods have less dust particles than a house in the city. Some people are like, I don't want my vegetables in the house. Well, if you have house plants, what's the difference? If you don't have house plants in the air in your house, most likely is, is um toxic, more toxic than somebody who has a bunch of plants in the house. Plants purify the air. And it doesn't matter what type of plants they are. And you can see I have a lot of plants in here. <laughs> I'm just biased, I guess. I always wanted a house out in the um out in the woods. I was always afraid I was gonna have to pow pow somebody if they came on my property. I think I have a I have a, a land, but you know, the thing is the thing they don't tell you about about homesteading or purchasing bare not barren, blank a blank slate of land is that building a house is expensive. I went and talked to a contractor. I talked to two or three of them, actually. And one was like 180 a square foot. And that was the cheapest one. He said the price of materials has went up. So I can actually go and buy a house if I was looking for a house because I have a house already buy a, a house that's already built or buy a house in a subdivision cheaper than I can buy 
then I can build a house on my own property. And then you're at the mercy of the contractor. Luckily, I have a contractor that I, a guy that I know that he does what he says he's going to do. But some of them contractors, they tell you they're going to show up and they do not show up. Especially when you're building a house. I built a cabin out there. And I, I had some good people, though. <laughs> some good people. Because there are some horror stories out there. I had the electrician come out. One of the electricians came out because when they were putting the septic in, they popped my line. And um, he was telling me how he built his house and that you have to be careful about the builder you choose. Because some of those builders, they ain't no good. They don't do what they say they're going to do. They're trying to build your house and 10 other houses at the same time. And they'll put you on the back burner. Or they'll go bankrupt and take your money. We had a church out here in, well, South Austin. This one contractor, he, he's he got to be, he's got to be, um, I would be afraid to rob from a church. He went and he did it to more than one group of people. He went and took deposits from all of these churches and businesses and told them that he was going to do work for them. Right? Took all their money. Then he went bankrupt and disappeared and went to Mexico or something. They couldn't even find him. Contractors, some of them are crooks. And he had, the thing is, he had his, he, it wasn't that he was building the church. He was supposed to do the parking lot. He had his um. He had he had made it look like he was gonna do something. He put trailers out there. He was gone. Next thing you know, all of these businesses are on. You know, Austin. This happened years ago on Austin TV. The man them run off with all their money, and they do it a lot. If you're dealing with the small, I mean, if you're gonna, and even the big companies. Even the big companies, they build your house and they're supposed to fix it if there's something wrong and they don't want to come back. So you have to do your research. It's scary. It is scary. And most people are um, have contract, I mean, have construction loans. And they, they do draws on the construction loans. They don't get the, all, the lump sum of the money. But that doesn't mean that they, they, they can't do shoddy work on your house. Or, you know, instead of pouring a slab, well, that gets inspected. So it doesn't mean that they're not going to take shortcuts. That's all I'm saying. Or they're not going to do it in a timely manner. And you are out there on a lurch waiting for them to finish your house. And you don't have anywhere to live. It's just scary. That's why I'm still here because I was initially going to go out and build out on my property. And I said, well, let me do a test run. So I got the um, little she shed, the cabin, and I built that. That was easy. And I was like, in my mind, I said, well, if I could do this, this is just a, a, a micro house, a mini house. If I could do this, I could build the house. But I'm still at the mercy of the subcontractors. I could be my own general contractor because, you know, I kind of know what where things are supposed to go on a little bit about construction. But I'm not an electrician. I'm not a plumber. I'm not um, an HVAC guy. I don't put in windows. I don't do that type of construction. I do little things. So that's why that made me think. Maybe I should buy um, another property with a house already on it. Then I don't have to worry about it. I, I mean, you have to worry about the old, the house having already having problems, but at least it's already there. You ain't going to be stuck with a shell of a house. And those poor people, man, they built the, like they built the, they didn't even put the walls up. They built the, the, um, the skeleton of the house. I don't know what to call it. No walls, no nothing. And then they just stopped construction. You could tell that construction was 
I mean, there were people who were on television telling the stories of how they got ripped off and their contractor ran off with most of their money. They must have had. Some of these people in Texas, they have a lot of money. And they will, you know, they give the construction, you know, the, the, the company, I don't know. They're supposed to do draws. You're not supposed to give them all the money. But apparently these people were giving him draws and he kept on asking for more money and they kept on giving to him. And then when he thought he had enough, gone, disappeared. Scary. I know that you're not supposed to live, live your life in fear, but I try to take heed to when somebody has been through something because I'm not exempt from that happening to me. Anyway, here's my tray. I have everything in there. And hopefully I get more ger a better germination than I did over there. It's been um, 10, 12 days and I don't like what I see. I see the brassicas, they're coming up. But I mean, these are brassicas too with the exception of the, the two nightshades I have here. And I don't really like nightshades in the house, but I'm gonna plant these. All I want is two of each. Um, Hopefully I get more because that tray, I think it had too much water in it and it drowned the seeds or it rotted or the fungus, I don't know. There's little gnats in there, not a lot, but enough for me to be concerned. So I thank you guys for being with me. I'm sorry I gave I get on these tangents because I have these thoughts in my mind when I'm doing things. I think when I'm working and I, I think about things when I'm planting stuff about you know what I want to do or what I would like to do and what the pitfalls, because I would try to look at everything from every angle prior to me making a step. I'm not at the age where I can make that big of a mistake. So I thank you guys for being with me and I'm gonna water this in. I hope you enjoyed this. This is for wig 2023. Yeah, I'm just gonna do what I do. No big deal to me. I'm just gonna do what I do. I would be doing it anyway, so. Wish me luck, huh? I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.